Hi crafters, makers and everyone in between. Welcome to the Felt Hub with Lincolnshire Fen Crafts. Today we are going to be making these super easy fox head shapes. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get them really nice and firm so that you can add all those amazing details. And this head can be used for something more complicated like adding to a wire armature or just a simple fox body shape. So make sure you hit the subscription button below and the notification bell and then that way you will never ever miss one of my tutorials again. So let's talk about the wool. This is a wool top. It's a, I think it's called Vixen or Fox, not quite sure, but it's a wool top and that is absolutely fine to use. Or you can use a carded wool, which has much shorter fibres. Either will work equally as well and a merino wool top will also work. You need a 38 star felting needle. Well, that's my favorite anyway, that a good all rounder and just a nice mat to work on. I've got a 100% wool, uh, I think this is a 12 mil soft mat here and then a soft topper as well. I'll put all the links for tools and accessories uh, below in the description. So I think I'm gonna work with the carded wool and what you want to do is split it down the middle because you want to start with quite a thin piece. You don't want too much bulk, you want to build up, you wanna add it and not have to take anything away because once you've started needle felting, that's more difficult. And then of course your trusty wooden barbecue skewer which we're going to be working around. We're gonna make the head in two parts which is much easier than trying to create that shape all in one go. So keeping that carded wool flat Hold it against the skewer and start to wrap it around, keeping it nice and tight. And if you're using carded wool, keep your fingers close as possible to the wooden skewer so it doesn't pull away. And then just tuck it into place. Just a few pokes with the needle just to hold it. That's all that's needed. And we're going to create a really simple needle felted ball shape. And there is another video tutorial on that. This is such a great technique and can be used for all sorts of projects especially gorgeous garlands where you want to add the needle felted balls and they just take so little time to make. So I'm just building up this shape here and just make sure it doesn't get away from you and start sort of getting really long. You want to keep it nice and short and then start really poking around with that needle to create that shape. You know, we're going for that lovely curved ball shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we want it to be nice and firm. So keep poking, going at a diagonal angle, try and avoid hitting the stick. That's why I always like to use a 38 star needle for this type of project when you're working against wire or wood because it just um, takes much more of a battering than a finer needle would, would and doesn't break as easily. So keep building that up. Pull off any excess wool. You can always add a bit more on if you haven't got enough but it just makes it easier to work around the stick and roll it in your hands just to, just to smooth it and, and get it to hold on to the fibers underneath and go back to creating that shape. Keep working it and now you can see how that ball shape is really coming together. It's getting nice and firm. There's no need to take it off the stick. You can do all of this on the stick and then when you take it off the stick, we'll just you know do some final um, felting to it just to tidy it up and fill in any holes created by the stick. And that's why it's better to use a barbecue skewer than say a chopstick because you don't want to leave big holes through the center. So keep it going, keep it moving and make sure there is no loose wool. And you really want to be moving at a diagonal angle as you are working around and keep it continually moving. If you felt over felt in one place, you're gonna make it misshapen. You're gonna create sort of, um, craters and flatten the wool and you can actually over felt but that does take quite some time so keep it going turn it around work whichever way is comfortable keep your working hand away from your holding hand so that you don't poke your fingers and if you feel more comfortable with the protectors that you can get the leather protectors for your hand fingers then just um, use those as well and there you can see it's coming along really nicely now. And don't worry about any needle marks that you can see. You can roll it in your hand to, to, to get rid of them. And most of this is going to be covered with wool when you add your fox details anyway. 
So you can see I'm just working the top layer of that wool now. I'm not going too deep because what I'm doing now is that the, the center is nice and firm and we created it really firm because we wrapped it really tightly. So we took away a lot of the work. See how squishy that's soft, squidgy, but it really comes straight back to shape. So take it off, give it a roll, just helps with that round, that ball shape and also smooths out any needle marks as you can see. And then just at the end where you've had the skewer, you just want to tease that wool over and just close that gap. Really easily done. And again, you don't actually have to do this, but you know, because it's going to be covered, but I do it anyway, it's just habit. And then we're going to add the nose. Now we're gonna create this separately. It is so much easier to do separately. And again, we're gonna do that on the skewer. And you want even less wool this time, a really thin piece of wool because we don't want a lot of bulk. We want to keep that nice and flat as we did before and work at the point. And it's a small, I would say no bigger than say half an inch long that you want to end up with. Um, but the important thing with the nose is keep the tip of the nose nice and firm but the back of the nose, you want that wool to stay loose because that is what we are going to attach to the head and just keep it flat. Don't let the wool twist because that adds unnecessary bulk and it makes it more difficult to get that shape. And you can see now you're just leaving that wool loose at the end. You don't want to felt this area. And then again, go diagonally. This takes very little felting. And then just turn it, work whichever way you're comfortable. And what I'm working on now is the nose. So I'm pushing that, pushing through that and flattening it and I'm getting it nice and firmly felted. It's really simple. Most techniques with needle felting are quite simple, but it's just knowing the techniques. Just doing a comparison to see where we're at and whether I've got enough on there, which I think I have. So I'm just going to pull that wool off, wrap it round and just firm it up a little more. And we'll do a lot of this on the face as well. Remember, keep that end loose because that's going to make it much easier to attach to the front of the face. And I'm just flattening and shaping the nose now. You see how that's really coming together? It's such a simple technique. It's just knowing how to do it. Trying to create the shape all in one piece is really tricky. I found that out the hard way when I first started needle felting way back in, I don't know, 2014, I think. Um, but this, the barbecue skewer and, you know, creating body parts separately just makes life so much easier. And you see how that wool is loose there. That's super important. And when you're attaching any limbs, whether it's legs, noses, always make sure you've got that loose part at the end. It just makes attaching and putting the project together so much easier. So pop it on top of the ball. It'll feel really awkward and it'll move around quite a lot. But just poke in those loose ends that we left. It looks really weird at the moment, I know, but I promise you, once you've finished, we are going to add some more, add some more wool. It looks a bit like a beak at the moment, but it won't. And just keep working that in. And if you work through, right through the, the, the nose as far as you can, that will pull that nose closer to the face and will actually shorten it. Can you see that happening now as I'm poking through? And I'll come a bit further up in a moment. I'm just going to go back to that end as well, just to tidy up that nose. We'll work on that again later on as well. But just keep going. And if you haven't used, if you're not using the finger guards, keep that finger flat above where you're actually felting so you don't poke yourself. And as you can see, it still looks very, very strange, but we're going to just keep working it, pushing through, and that nose will begin to shorten. I'm going further up the end now because I want it to shorten even further. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the fibres from the nose right through into the head and that's shortening it. And that's a really good technique. So if you work further away from that limb into the, the body part that you're attaching it to, those fibres will tangle together and it will sort of draw itself together and shorten. 
So we've got quite a good shape now, as you can see. Um, you can see where the head actually is. They've got quite a high forehead, um, the uh, foxes. So I'm just going to now cover up that join and build up the base of that nose just so it looks less like a beak and more like a fox. And just pop a little bit of wool on and wrap it around just until you're happy where it is. And as I said, start with less than you need. You can always add some more. That's one of the key elements of needle felting for most projects, not all, but for most. Keep wrapping it around. And this carded wool's great because the fibers are short. They're really easy to add on to the head and the nose. And can you see now how that's built up? So it was so easy doing it in two parts. Now we can just add some more fibers to really get that shape going. And you can see that's really starting to, to come together now. Back to the nose. Don't worry if you squash it a little bit, it'd be fine. We'll, we'll work on that some more later. And you can use your hands as well. So you just give it a gentle roll just to smooth out those fibers. I'm just going to flatten that nose a bit. It's a little bit pointy and the fox's nose is not quite as pointy as that. Well, our British fox anyway. And that's coming together rather nicely now. And you've just got to keep working it until you are happy with the finished shape. And I always recommend having a photograph of a real fox in front of you, either on your phone, you know, print one out on your laptop, whatever you're working on, just for reference because it really makes a big difference if you actually observe the shape. And in the previous tutorial, I think when we did the wire armature for the fox, you can see how, you know, looking at the skeleton of a fox, looking at the anatomy really helps get that, that great shape. And so I'm just, I'm just gonna pop a little bit more in here because it's, it's just not quite wide enough yet. And then of course, because the wool's still quite soft, I can shape that as and when, and I'll probably work on it a bit more later on as well. But if you want to have a look at how to create a wire armature for a fox, then I'll pop a link in the description below um, showing you how easy it is. The key to working with wire armature, if you want to have a go at that, is to make sure the proportions are right. If the proportions are right, it doesn't really matter about everything else. Everything else will, will be fine, but if proportions are not correct, then you're going to end up with a fox as, as long as a sausage dog or with the wrong length legs. So there is a great tutorial on that. And there's also a free download that you can access via the description and you can print out or use the pattern for the fox armature so that, to make sure that your size is correct and proportions are right every time. So your fox head is now ready for you to add the ears, which I will pop into another tutorial for you.